Hello, it's me. I've come back with another unboxing. This one comes all the way from Russia. Uh, by the way, I know I haven't been putting out a lot of content. Life has kind of taken over, but I'm doing uh, what I can as much as I can. The puzzles are still coming in and the um, collection video is on the way. But this is from Grigoriev, so let's see what we've got. Okay, this was a long time coming. There's been some challenges in terms of getting things off to here. I can get through to here. There we go. All right, so this I've been fairly excited about. Like I say, it's been kind of a long time coming. And out of the way. Okay, so we see three puzzles here. And you can see that they have the characteristics of ghost puzzles. Now, I've been really looking forward to these because they do complete a collection. So here's what we have. We see three different colors, and you can see that they're ghost cubes. And let's see if we can unpack exactly what this is. So this, the blue one, is what's called the diamond. So uh, he called this a diamond puzzle. This, the red one, is called the ruby puzzle. The reason why he's doing that is the original ghost cube was called a... Uh, golden cube. So he's doing like the heavy metals. So this would be the ruby puzzle. And this here would be, I think this is called the amethyst puzzle, nice and green. So amethyst, ruby, and diamond. So what does all this mean? Well, let's, uh, let's take a look at this one here first. And it moves really, really well. So we see one, two, three. So you've got a three, three layers over here. We appear to have two layers over here, so two by three. And as we come across here, we see one, two, three, maybe four. Let's see if I can get this into movable position here. Okay, yep, I see four layers here. So it's a two by three by four. And let's see if I can uh, find a way to make them move. Okay, this all moves to here. Or this lines up here. See if we can line these up. I see four over here. So if we take this to be four, maybe this can move in this direction. I don't quite have it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Which means it has to be here. One, two, three, and four. Which means it may want to be here. One, two, three, four. Nope. Maybe this goes here. Yeah, okay. Wow. Okay, I want to make sure I got this right. So, two by three by four. Now, here's, here's the thing. This style of cuboid is called a brick cuboid. And they even look like bricks. And they're all the same, but here's... What they, um, here's what this resembles. This is a two by three by four. And as a brick cuboid, it has similar parity. This is by the form N by N plus one by N plus two which means you're going to have two layers that are of the same parity, even over here. This two by three by four. If I move this one parity of the same, uh, move a parity into the same parity, an even layer parity to another even layer parity, I can do a 90 degree turn and then continue to do turns. However, what I can't do is I can't move an even parity into an odd parity in 90 degrees and do anything like that. So to scramble this puzzle, all these moves have to be 180 degrees. But these moves can be 90 degrees. So in scrambling this puzzle, you basically scramble, you do 180 degree turns, and then you go from the three coming up to down, and then the two layers that can scramble being in front of you. So that's the easiest way to, to do that, because these can, can go 90 degrees. So that's kind of what we have here. So this is the three layers over here. Uh, and then from here, we can do a scramble where this turns up, but you have to do 90 degree turns from this angle. A little catchy here, there we go. But I can do a 90 degree turn over here. So 90 degree turn over here, bang, turn the two into here, and then I can continue the scramble. So now I can move the two into the four, just like I move this two into the four. So what, what he's done is he's ghosted like this. So this is how it was ghosted. Now there's a couple of things to bear in mind, so I can turn it into here, and I can do my 180 degree turn here, and then I can continue to do 90 degree turns here and continue the scramble. Don't want to scramble it quite yet. 
Okay, so this is the amethyst. The amethyst is sort of like the standard uh, ghosting, which makes it easy to visualize. Now this 2 by 3 by 4 does serve a function to complete a series. Now you're probably wondering, well, what do these do? And I'll get into that in a second. But if we look at this as the baseline, uh, the original or the first order of the brick cuboids is going to be this guy over here. 1 by 2 by 3. That's n by n plus 1 by n plus 2. So 1 by 2 plus 3, here's your 1, or well, here's your 3, here's your 2, and there's your 1. So I can move the 1 into the 3. Now, this doesn't shape shift because it's got no place to go, but this can only be 180 degree turns, and this is only 180 degree turns as well. So it's kind of unique in that arm. Not a particularly difficult puzzle, but the ghost version of that is this guy. So this is ghosted in the only way that it can. Pulled up to here, and then you can scramble it like that. Maybe a little bit harder, but not by much. So that's the one by two by three. This represents the next version, which is the two by three by four. That's what that looks like. Now I did do a tutorial on a puzzle that is near and dear to my heart, which is the next level up, which is the three by four by five. So here's the three by four by five. You can move the three into the five. It's the same parity. You can do 90 degree turns and continue. This remains one of the most durable puzzle. It's actually one of the very first cuboids that I bought many years ago. So this is solved the same way. This is only 180 degree turns in conjunction with each other, and this can be 90 degree turns. And the, uh, the ghost version of this is this bad boy over here. Now what's interesting is this looks like a brick. This one doesn't, but it is a three by four by five. Three, one, two, three, rather, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So this is ghosted in, in that way. Uh, now here's my challenge number one. Challenge number one, here's a four by five by six. This is one, two, three, four by six. So similar types of scrambles, excellent durable puzzle. Now my first challenge is give me a ghost version of this, but hold on one second. There's a little bit more to say, but anyway, for the sake of, of completion, here are my ghost versions of these brick puzzles. But there's something interesting. When you look at how a ghost is done, if I were to look at the ghosting, let's move this up here a little bit, the ghosting of, say, a 3x3, three three, there's symmetry on all sides. It's a cube. So when you ghost it, you ghost it like this, and that's how you come up with this, the very first ghost that I ever got. And basically, you solve it by putting it off center, and then from there, you can scramble it from there. But it doesn't matter where you ghost it on, each side is going to be the same. The thing about a brick cuboid, is that there's asymmetry on all sides. So you can ghost it like this, and you can ghost it like this, and you can ghost it like this. So what's interesting is that if you do one version of a ghost, you've not done all of it, and you might not have done the most difficult. And something that Dan Fast, Crazy Bad Cuber, brilliantly noticed is that if he took a three by three by four, and he said, well, let's create a ghost out of this. Now, this is not a brick cuboid. This is a shapeshifter. It's an n by n by n plus uh, 1. So you can do 90 degree turns here just because this is exactly not just the same parity, but the same numbers. But here you can't because you're moving a 3 layer, an odd layer, into an even layer. So this has to be 180 degrees. So there's a lot of similarities. So he decided, well, let's do a ghost of it. Let's ghost this layer here. And he called that the heavens cuboid. So when you notice that, here is the top layer, the three layer, here's the middle layer and the middle layer, uh, the other layer over here. So line this up, line these up, line these up. It's been a while, but uh, and I don't think I, there we go. So then you have a, a, a nice little challenging solve. This is faded, unfortunately. So you can ghost it like that, and it's easy to keep track of because, you know, when you solve it, this, these are the only parts that scramble with each other that you can do 90 degree turns. This is going to be 180 degree turns, so when I, oops, when I scramble, boy, this moves great. So when I scramble it like this, all the part that is ghosted is going to be 180 degree turns, so I can solve it layer by layer and see that it, it comes in just fine. Dan said, well, not so fast. Dan fast. He said, well, let's ghost it like this. 
and he came up with the Hell's Cuboid. So Hell's Cuboid did exactly that. So it's the same kind of puzzle. It's this. You can see the three layers, but in order to move it, you've got these uh, three layers over here. But it's ghosted like this with these three layers here. One, two, three. And that's where it's ghosted. So it's ghosted like this. So if I line it up just right, just right here. So now you can get now you can get the full scramble. But this is how it's ghosted, which means when you solve it, you you, you can try to solve the top and these two middles and the bottom here, but they're going to be off skewed because it's going to be ghosted like this, which means you literally have to solve the edges, which makes it much, much more difficult to solve. So based on that principle, that a cuboid is asymmetric in terms of its size, so too every ghost cube that you make from a brick or from any other type of cuboid can have multiple ways of ghosting. So I've got a couple challenges. My first challenge is you've seen me do a solve of the 3 by 4 by 5 Now this one is challenging. This is the Hell's version. And I think that, uh, I think Crazy Bad Cuber uh, coined a certain phrase, but one that is ghosted in a way that's easier to solve, in this case, oops, in this case it would be like this, that would be the Heaven's version. The Hell's version is going to be, is going to be ghosted at the corner so that you actually have to solve it by the edges, which is much, much more difficult. And that's what this one is. So this one is ghosted by the edges over here. Now, I do have a full tutorial, so I'm not going to get too into detail with this, but it was a fascinating cube to solve because I had to put these guys in and I couldn't solve the top here. I had to sort of, if I'm going to solve the top, I had to make sure that all these guys lined up and then did uh, do each one layer by layer. Much, much more challenging. So this is the Hell's version. So challenge and request number one by any brilliant builders over there is first off, well, what I'd like to see is I'd like to see a ghost version that looks like a brick. What I like um, about these is they look like a brick. This one just looks like a cube, which is fine, but I'd like to get a heavens version of this as well and maybe a hell's version that has a brick look to it. Anyway, that's challenge number one. Challenge number two is a 3 by 4 by 5 or is a 4 by 5 by 6 but to have different versions. Now here's the thing, uh, the difference between the what? The difference between the 3 by 3 by 4 is there's only two ways to ghost it. This way and this way. And that's it. You could do it this way but it's going to look the same. Just like with the solid cube, there's only one way to ghost it. With an n by n by n plus 1 because there's two n's, there's only two ways to ghost it. But what Muhammad Badir discovered is that there's three ways to ghost it. Like this, which would be the easiest, which would be the, uh, um, which would be this guy over here, the amethyst cube. So this is sort of the heaven version of it, amethyst. But then there's also a way to do it like this, which, was, which would be the hell's way of ghosting. In this case, that would be the diamond version. So, so if I look here, I see Four are moving over here. One, two, three, four. So it's like this. And if I move this just right, move this into the correct position, see if I can do that. Then we'll see how this moves. So we already saw, and just for the sake of watching, how this moves into place. Let me uh, find the proper position here. And I think maybe here, we're getting there. Okay, yeah. So, so this is how this one is ghosted, like this. This one is ghosted like this, the, the Hell's Way, but this one is called the Diamond Cube. Now this one may be a little bit more difficult for me to immediately visualize. Yep, there it is. Okay. So we can see that the way this is ghosted is like this. So this is ghosted like this from top to bottom. This is ghosted like this in the Hell's Way. So in order to solve this... Oh, no wonder. Okay. It has to be like this. So this is the two. So this two will move into this position. And then from there, I can move it here. 
So this is going to be much more difficult, I would imagine. Now because um, the cube has perfect symmetry, there's only one way to ghost it. This is two ways to ghost it. We have to remember the third way to ghost it. And the third way to ghost it is like this. And that's what the Ruby Cube is. So notice there's only two layers that I can comfortably turn. And that's equivalent to this move over here. So that's going to be interesting because I've not seen the likes of that before. And when I turn this, this is the four. When I line this up just right, and there is going to be definitely a learning curve for me. There we go. Right like this. Got to loosen it up just a little bit. Okay, good. And then this can move over here too. Okay, so I will loosen this up a little bit. But that's where this is. So this is equivalent to here. So in order to make the turns that I want to make, the second layer is here. I actually have to move it like this. So here's the two into the four. So to do my moves, I have to move it here and then here. So that's really going to be a perspective skewer. All right, so if I had to look at it, get my perspective here. So. This is how this is done. Uh, this is skewed. This is how this is skewed. This is how this is skewed right here. So this is where the uh, ghosting comes from. So this is ghosted over here. I think it kept saying skewing. It's actually ghosted. So, so there you have it. This uh, not only helps complete a series that I have of brick ghost cubes, but it also does all the ghosting that's possible with this. So what I'm going to be doing is solving these. And I'm going to do it much the same way that I did with the 3 by 4 by 5 It might be prudent to scramble this with this and maybe do a tandem solve of all of these in order to really get a good perspective on how to put these together. All right, going to put this over here, here, and here. Okay, so there you have it in terms of a order of difficulty. I think we've got this followed by this. This one I don't know. I've never solved a puzzle like that, but they're all variations of this three of this two by three by four. So I very much look forward uh, to solving this, um, and trying it. And again, my request, my challenge is on my three by four by five. Can anybody design me a heavens version of this? And actually, can they design a diamond version, an amethyst version, and a ruby version? This one is ghosted like this. Can somebody do it like this? And can someone do it like this? So they're different experiences, and I will definitely invest in it. So, uh, and, and of course, if anybody can do a ghosting version of the 4x5x6, by by then I would be highly interested in that as well. Okay, more on this later. I very much look forward to seeing how these variations uh, contribute to the solve. Credit to Dan Fast for coming up with that idea to begin with, and then seeing how it's moved off and exploded into various and brilliant techniques. So, more on the solve later, and thanks for watching.